Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Minerals Live. Hey everyone. Got uh, one less person on the uh, set today. That's that's right. Steve's on the road. Steve is on the road, yeah. Yep. He's uh, working hard before Tucson. Mm -hmm. Doing a little business out on the uh, East Coast. But yep. uh, we're here and uh, we're going to talk to you about rotocrosite today. You, you right. listeners asked and we answered. Be careful so, what you ask uh, for. Be careful what you <laughs> ask for, yeah. <laughs> We have a whole program just about one of our favorite minerals, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe your favorite mineral too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like rhodochrosite. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about rhodo. We'll talk about localities. We'll talk about chemistry. I'll bore you with crystal stuff, and mm -hmm. uh, then we'll have some nice specimens for sale. Sounds good. So okay. you can get, get that rhodo before Tucson. The phone's ringing already. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to kill that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> ringing off the hooks. Yep. But you do know how to get a hold of us, minerals at collectorsedge.com, or uh, you can shoot us an email, uh, richard at collectorsedge.com or phil at collectorsedge.com. Any yep. of us would love to help you. Absolutely. But, uh, first, I will do a little educational spiel here. There you go. About roto. All right. So what is rotocrosite? Uh, most of you probably know what rotocrosite is. It's a beautiful red mineral that's very popular with collectors. But uh, if you want to get technical about it, rotocrosite is manganese carbonate, MnCO3. Uh, it's typically red. You probably are all already knew that, but it can actually occur in a whole bunch of different colors. Brown, gray, white, pink, some of the less desirable colors, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, hardness is pretty soft, about three and a half to four. So you do see red gemstones, but it's not something that you probably want to wear every day, at least uh, depending on how you wear your jewelry, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, trigonal crystal system. So it's part of the calcite group. So all the calcite group minerals have uh, trigonal crystal symmetry and uh, you can see that that little crystal shape up there is a rhombohedron and uh, you can see the angles between those lines are typically 120 degrees so not quite right angles that's why the rhombohedron has that distinctive shape that's mm -hmm. uh, kind of a square but not really a square so that's that's the rhombohedron that's the most common crystal mm -hmm. form that we see in rotocrosite. Uh, fun fact, the type locality for roto is actually in Romania, which is something I didn't know. Yeah, Kavnik. Mm -hmm. The uh, Kavnik mine, yeah, which uh, which does produce some roto. Mm -hmm. Some of it can be fairly attractive. Yeah, but, absolutely, uh, in yeah. association with a lot of nice minerals too. Yep, yep, sulfides. And, yep. Yeah, some some nice things come from there. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's the type locality. Yep. Uh, so rotocrosite occurs in all different geologic environments, uh, but high quality roto crystals, as we'll talk about in a minute, are a little more restricted in where they occur in terms of the geologic conditions. Uh, Rotocrosite also forms what we call a solid solution series with uh, calcite and siderite. So roto, remember from the last slide, is manganese carbonate, calcite is calcium carbonate, and siderite is iron carbonate. And you can mm. see that little triangular graph there. That's called a, a ternary diagram. So basically you have different minerals in the corners, and then you can plot composition anywhere on that on that little triangular graph. Hmm. So most of our sweet home roto, for example, is going to be very much in that lower right corner there, the manganese carbonate corner. Whereas uh, if you add some impurities, it maybe will move it over a little bit. Okay. Siderite is also on that plot, which I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, in mm -hmm. any case. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to crystal form. Yep. Uh, so rhombohedrons we talked about, uh, that's probably the most common crystal form for rhodochrosite. Um, obviously the Sweet Home Mine here in Colorado produces pretty much exclusively rhombohedral rhodochrosite. Um, other important localities include the Pasta Bueno area down in Peru, mm -hmm. and the Wutong Mine over in China produces some nice rhodochrosite ROMs. And geologic conditions are typically uh, what we call intermediate to high sulfidation epithermal veins. And that's a fancy way of saying that you have a hydrothermal fluid that's coming up a fault in the earth mm. and uh, tends to form sulfides in association with okay. the roto. Gotcha. And uh, we see that all over. Mm. So uh, that's, the same. that's most common for the ROMs. Uh -huh. So now we'll go to the other kind mm -hmm. of major habit for right. rotocrosite, which are scalenohedrons. And uh, I think everybody's probably familiar with the beautiful rotocrosite from the Kalahari district down mm -hmm. in South Africa. Uh, those are pretty much exclusively scalenohedrons. Um, also, the Uchuchakwa, I think that's how you pronounce it. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> mine in uh, Peru also produces some very nice uh, scalenohedronal rhodochrosite. And uh, mm -hmm. every now and then you see some nice ones from uh, Santa Eulalia right. in uh, Mexico. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, can you think of any other locations where you get 
the Sc- Crow's Sc- 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 I was trying to uh, trying to think when I was. Those ones together. from Nevada. Those are are those. Oh more, yeah yeah yeah. You know? Those are mm-hmm. yeah from uh, from northern Nevada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's other places and even some old localities like in Germany, you know, right. Oh, right, right, right. Yep. that produce some scalenohedron mm-hmm. or crotocyte. Uh, but the South African ones are definitely the most famous. Yep. And uh, geologic conditions for these crystals can vary a fair amount. But I thought it was interesting that a lot of these uh, big manganese deposits, so like in South Africa, this is a huge sedimentary type manganese deposit. Uh, has these high quality rotor crystals and also the the Uchu Chakwa mine in uh, Peru, mm-hmm. you often see this black matrix, which is basically manganese oxide minerals. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, Rich asked me the other day if there was a connection in terms of geologic conditions between one crystal form or another. Right. And uh, I think there probably is. Um, why that is is a harder question to answer. Mm. Um, so, we'll try to get you we'll, there. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I could make something up, but <laughs> mm-hmm. I've already told you it's ambiguous. So. Right. Mm. Uh, one more habit I'll mention, uh, which a lot of you have probably seen, is butchroidal rhodochrosite. And, uh, you know, this isn't quite as desirable, obviously, as nice euhedral crystals, uh, but it can form attractive specimens. Mm-hmm. And uh, probably the most famous location for uh, lapidary rhodochrosite is the uh, Capilitas mine down in Argentina. And, uh, there's also the Opu mine in Japan produces some nice butch road road cross site. And uh, there's even a place in Kazakhstan that produces some nice examples of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so often these are what we call low sulfidation epithermal veins. So basically mm-hmm. this is a hydrothermal vein where you don't have a lot of sulfide minerals and you have a lot of quartz and rhodochrosite and uh, other carbonate minerals associated with that as well. Okay. And the kind of banding that you see often has to do with the way that these these veins are forming. So you have a fluid that's coming up a fracture or a fault, and it's depositing a layer, and then the conditions change, and the chemistry is slightly different. You get a pink layer, you get a white layer, you get a pink layer, and you end up with this beautiful kind of banding. Right. Like you can see in that right photo. Now, a lot of them form stalactites. Those don't necessarily form in veins, right? Yeah, that's that's a good mm-hmm. question. So I think some of that might potentially be be secondary. You know, some rhodochrosite is primary. It's it's an original mineral that's depositing along with the metallic minerals. Mm-hmm. And then other places, rhodochrosite can be can be secondary. So you're weathering primary manganese containing minerals or mm-hmm. carbonate containing minerals. And I think that the kind of caves that the Argentina mine is famous for mm-hmm. with these big rhodostalactites, some of those may actually be, be secondary gotcha. in terms of how they formed. Gotcha. All right. So moving on to occurrences. Obviously, we have to talk about our, our yes. occurrence, which, which we're rather <laughs> partial to. I think some of you probably are as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't need to tell most of you about the Sweet Home Mine. But, uh, I'll, go ahead anyway. <laughs> why? Yeah, why not? I read all this godly book on here. <laughs> Might as well. Yeah. Not like you guys have a choice anyways. Right. Gotta, gotta listen to me for the next little bit. So, uh, the Sweet Home Mine is a small silver, primarily silver mine, but it's got some lead, copper, zinc, other stuff as well. In the central Rocky Mountains near Alma, uh, which is a, about two hours from here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rhodochrosite is a major accessory mineral with the metallic minerals. And this occurs again in these so-called epithermal veins. They're narrow, they're steeply dipping. And uh, the idea is that the mineralization here is related to some big porphyry intrusions. So these are big magma intrusions. They have a lot of molybdenum and they were emplaced, we think about 26 million years ago. And uh, obviously most of you know that rhodochrosite occurs here as rhombohedral crystals. They're typically fairly large. Some of them can be really big like the Alma King, mm-hmm. and uh, I think it's safe to say these are the finest rhombohedral rhodochrosite crystals in the world. Um, I think they're the best period. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of debate, Kalahari versus uh, Sweet Home. I'm right. not, not going to go into that too much. Right, just have one of each in your collection. Just have one of each, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's good to have one of each. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so one unanswered question with the Sweet Home is uh, why are these veins so rich in manganese when there's a lot of other veins nearby that are pretty similar geologically but they don't have as much manganese and they don't have high quality roto so uh, we have some egghead science types who are investigating that right now at detroit city okay and uh see what they can come up with gotcha as far as answering that question (laughs) (laughs) Uh, a couple great rotos from sweet home i think most of you know the alma king on the left there there it is on the cover of the denver museum magazine 
Uh, the snow cone is a very fine piece as well. That's that's over in the Mid Museum right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that was out of the the Good Luck Pocket. Is, is yes, that correct? that's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big big crystal. What do, what do you think that crystal is like? Eight centimeters, ten yeah, centimeters. Yeah, it's it's huge. Yeah, it's fantastic piece. Yep. Absolutely phenomenal piece. Yep. You know, the Alma King is the most famous, but as far as overall kind of size quality relationships, I'm almost partial to the the, the snow cone, cone. Absolutely. Myself. Yep. yep. So moving across the ocean to South Africa. Uh, we'll talk about the Nichwaning Mines, and uh, the Nichwaning Mines are part of the Kalahari Manganese District, which is a huge mining area. It's actually the world's most important manganese deposit. Um, geologically, it's pretty cool because it actually formed a really long time ago, so about 2.2 billion years ago. Uh, there was microbial stuff happening on the seafloor, and that concentrated manganese and uh, iron. And then uh, later on, that was metamorphosed at about 1.3 billion, and that's where a lot of the interesting minerals and we think some of the rhodochrosite pockets came from hmm. were formed at that time. Basically, taking the primary manganese ore, which is just uh, massive, massive. Actually, rhodochrosite, believe it or not, is an important ore mineral hmm. at the Nichwaning mines. So, you know, you don't think of rhodochrosite as an ore mineral, at least I don't. Mm -hmm. That uh, massive, basically brown, kind of ugly rhodochrosite is an important ore mineral. Right. So, millions of tons of rhodo are crushed there every day. But luckily, it's not specimen material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at least Sad. most of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah the Enchwani has closed down, hasn't it? Or I think it has, yeah. yeah. Really? I don't know the, the mm -hmm. full history there. But uh, there mm -hmm. was a, a MINRAC issue that I'm sure a lot of you... Mm -hmm viewers saw uh, about what was that like two years ago or about something right. mm -hmm. on the Nichwani yep. and I think it yeah they're kind of idle at the moment maybe right. so right. I that, think uh, um, that piece on the bottom there in this picture is, is on the cover it is yep. yeah yeah I've got that in the following photo too right there so uh, yeah a couple great photos of uh, well, there's the issue actually pieces. there's the issue <laughs> yep yep so that that's a famous piece actually I don't know where that do you know what collection that that piece is in I'm not sure uh, yeah. exactly. It came through our door not too long ago, a couple, three years ago. Okay. We did a little lab work on it oh, and cool. we were able to okay. uh, <clears throat> view it. it uh, it's quite the amazing piece. Yeah, it looks magnificent, mm -hmm. you know, that crown of crystals like right. that. Yep. So this and the piece to the left of it were from the late 70s finds. Right. I think it was 78. And this was an incredible find. Uh, the pockets were relatively small, but they produced really world-class rhodochrosite crystals. And as far as I know, nothing that good has been found since then mm -hmm. at Nichwaning. Uh, the piece on the left has a particularly large single crystal, about four and a half centimeters. Uh, that's from the Pelman collection. So I Correct. assume you guys had that yes. at one point. Yep. Now it's over in uh, Lebanon. Yep, over in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. uh, the the so-called snail is another famous yep. rhodochrosite. Uh, that's a little bit of a different habit, but uh, very aesthetic on that black is, matrix. Is that kind of a morph between betroidal and scalenohedron? Or? Yeah, you know, I think they're individual scalenohedrons, but they're so tight Tightly together that together. it's almost like pseudo botroidal mm -hmm. you know the that i i've never seen that piece in person but i've heard it's actually very translucent if yes, you get light on it it glows huh? it really glows yeah. yeah and that's that's something special about these nichwaning rotos right they really glow with good lighting yep mm. so moving back across the ocean to peru uh we'll talk about pasta bueno so mm -hmm. pasta bueno is primarily a tungsten mining district it's uh, really high up it's about fifteen thousand feet our friends at uh, Crystal Springs Mining did a cool uh, video project on that. That's where I got that photo from there mm -hmm. and uh, showed what life is like mining there. <laughs> and it, it's a tough place to mine. Right. You're high up. There's not much oxygen. It's in the Andes. Uh, but some really good rhodochrosite crystals have been found there, uh, particularly from the Huay, Huay La Pond, Huay Pond mine. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm butchering that. But uh, that and a number of other mines in that area have produced some really nice rhodochrystals. Uh, they can have intense cherry red color. Uh, they can be big, uh, up to 15, 20 centimeters on edge, actually, and uh, typically associated with quartz and humorite. Mm -hmm. um, these started coming out in the late 70s. A uh, number came on the market. Uh, future prospects are tough at this locality. It's a really tough place to mine, and I think a lot of the veins are kind of mined out, unfortunately. Right. Um, in terms of geology, it, it's actually somewhat similar to the Sweet Home. It's, it's one of these epithermal-type veins. It's a little more tungsten-rich, so mostly humorite as far as metallic minerals. Gotcha. And it's associated with these Andean volcanic rocks. Mm -hmm. So uh, a couple great rotos from Pasta Bueno. Uh, the ones on the, on the left, that was in the James Horner collection. It's over at the Mim Museum now. Uh, that crystal is actually 12 centimeters on edge. Hmm. So that's a pretty impressive specimen, actually. Right. That's the kind of piece that uh, made, a, made a number of people interested in trying <laughs> to go back to Pasta Bueno right. and, uh, and, and look for more. Yep. 
Uh, the middle piece is at the Harvard Museum. That's a huge crystal. Yes. That's like 20 centimeters or something. Right. And uh, I think you guys cleaned that at one point. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Long, long. That was even before my time. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I did see it when I was at Harvard um, six, seven years ago, and it is a major thing. It's impressive, yeah. yeah. I, I've seen it at the Harvard Museum, too, and it, mm -hmm. it's, it's a big crystal. You know, It doesn't have the mirror luster, but the color is really good, and it, mm -hmm. it's huge. Right. Uh, and I thought the one on the right was, was cute, too. That's an old uh, Van Scriver collection piece, gotcha. courier photo, but uh, it's perched on a Huberite crystal, and I, I thought that was a cute piece. Very fun. Really nice color. Yep. So... Uh, Moving across another ocean to China, uh, we'll talk about the Wutong Mine, and this is another place that we had quite a bit of involvement. Uh, the Wutong Mine is a small underground silver lead zinc mine. Uh, it's about 350 kilometers northwest of Hong Kong. And from what I read, and correct, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Richard, fine rudder crystals started appearing sporadically about 2006, 2007, that right. mm -hmm. something like that. Maybe even a hair earlier than okay. that. Yeah. In, in China, mm -hmm. and uh, as typical with new finds from China, there was some... Uh, obfuscation of the uh, right. <laughs> actual locality <laughs> right. yep. so uh, our, our fearless china affiliate uh mr sutton there you can see him sitting on some kind of improvised mine yes. mine hoist, hoist uh, yeah. he was able to track down where these were actually coming from in collaboration with some folks who are working with in china and uh, we actually started a specimen mining partnership there with the owners from about 06 to 2011 mm -hmm. and uh, some really fantastic specimens were found in that time uh, the Emperor and Empress of China were two famous pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, here's some photos of, uh, there's the Emperor on the left, and that that's a big piece. That's what, 30 centimeters or something? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I think maybe even bigger, even bigger? than that. Wow, yeah. okay. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, so as, as far as I know, for this habit of rotocrosite, these kind of tabular crystals, these are the biggest and best in the world. I can't mm -hmm. think of anywhere else where you get these crystals in that size. Right. Um, and these are rhombohedrons, but basically you've just squished a rhombohedron to where two of the faces are especially prominent and then the other faces are, are squished. Okay. Um, so it, it's the same habit as you get. And in fact, uh, I think we were talking about this the other week when Steve was on. I guess some rhombohedral rotos more equant ones. At the higher came levels. From Wutong, at mm -hmm. the higher levels. Right. Okay. And we have one on the show, actually. Oh, okay, great. One great. of the spends we have awesome. is, is, it looks like it almost came from the Sweet Home Mine. Cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah so there were some very mm -hmm. similar pieces to uh, Sweet Home. And I've right. heard people. You know, nickname the Wutong Mine, the, the so-called Chinese Sweet Home Mine. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm. There are some similarities. Right. And uh, some great fluorite combos as well. The, the yeah. one in the middle is nicknamed the Lips. Uh, the, the, the Spans, Gail and Jim Span, have a very fine specimen that's the, really, in my mind, the, the one that looks closest to Sweet Home right. almost because it has purple cubic fluorites and uh, really, you know, cherry red rhodochrosite ROMs yep. with it. Yeah. So. I voted for calling that one uh, in the middle there, Mick Jagger, but uh, <laughs> I, got, I got voted down, and so they just went for the lips. Uh, I can think of some other names, too, yeah, but I'm not going to go there. No, no, no. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Argentina. So, uh, so Argentina is not really as famous for collector specimens as the previous localities, but I think it's probably the world's most important locality for uh, lapidary grade mm -hmm. rotocrosite and yeah. uh, i'm sure most of you have seen this material it's all over the world it's very popular um apparently it's been known for a long time i didn't know this but when i was researching this for the presentation uh discovered back in 1873 they started calling it inca rose rotocrosite mm. and uh german guy franz mansfield uh mined 10,000 pounds in 1937 and uh had the property for a while after. I guess after that, the Argentinian government got involved and they were actually mining for rhodochrosite. Hmm. Uh, and the current status, I think it's, I've heard rumors that it's shut down or mined out. I'm not entirely sure, but I haven't seen a whole lot of new material there on the market. Right. But uh, typically you get stalactites. You can see that the guy there with the hammer is standing next to basically a wall of rhodochrosite, which is pretty impressive hmm. um, in the mine. Yep thought this was a cool photo mm -hmm. um, showing, you know, you can see these stalactites when they're not cut. They don't really look like much. They're kind of brown, tan. Uh, they're not, not very lustrous. But when you slice them, you have this beautiful uh, concentric banding and kind of a bright red core. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can see why this stuff is so popular as yeah. lapidary it. material. It's yeah. one of the th first things that drew me into the hobby. Oh, really? Cool. These, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, they're great. I think that, you know, with parasite slices and a couple other things are they're lapidary objects that most serious collectors would would still want to have in their collection yep you know because they're so special yep 
So uh, one more occurrence for Boich Royal Rotocro site that's kind of classic is the Opu Mine in Japan. And uh, a lot of you have probably seen this material. Uh, it typically occurs with pyrite. Uh, this was uh, also worked pretty early on, first in the late 1700s, then later in the 1800s. Uh, the 1900s, it was worked for lead, zinc, and cadmium, and then was closed in 79. Uh, apparently in the early 80s, uh, it was worked on a small scale for rhodochrosite, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, again, one of these epithermal vein deposits. Uh, it's in volcanic rock, so what's called the Japan Arc. Right. And uh, typically, botryoidal pink to red rhodochrosite uh, associated with pyrite. And uh, the next photo, I've got a... Pretty spectacular. A, pretty spectacular piece. Hard to appreciate the scale. Yeah, this, this is <laughs> huge. Yeah, you probably saw this in Tucson yep. last year as well. This this thing is gigantic. It's like three feet across. Yep. Mm. And a uh, beautiful combination with, with kind of uh, uh, butchroidal pyrite and uh, beautiful pinkish red rhodochrosite. Mm -hmm. This is really classic material yep. for Japan. So uh, one more roto locality. And obviously there's many, many more roto localities, but I just picked kind of a, a highlight reel here. Uh, is the Uchu Chakwa mine down in Peru. And uh, this is a big mining complex, uh, polymetallic, so mostly silver, but mm -hmm. also lead, zinc, gold. Uh, it's in the uh, Peruvian Andes, kind of like Pasta Bueno, pretty high up. Mm -hmm. uh, these are complex vein deposits. Uh, they're related to a uh, rock called Dacite, which is volcanic rock, part of the Andean volcanic province. And uh, great rhodochrosite crystals occur here. They're typically scalenohedronal. Uh, kind of like Nichuaning. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also typically on a black matrix, which is very similar to Nichuaning. Um, other nice stuff has been found here as well. Uh, wonderful wire silver. That photo is a little hard to see, but that's an extremely fine wire silver mm -hmm. that uh, we actually have for sale right now. Uh, big looping wire, again, on that same kind of black matrix, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. So a couple nice rotos from uh, the Uchu Chakwa mine. Uh, the one on the left is actually uh, another piece that we have from the uh, Gerhardt Wagner collection. Mm -hmm. uh, the middle pieces are uh, just a couple more examples on this black matrix. And then on the right is a particularly large crystal. This is about a four or five centimeter crystal, which, mm -hmm. which is pretty big. Most of them from this locality that I've seen are, what would you say, two centimeters? Correct, centimeters, yes, for sure. Something like that. Yep. Uh, but really wonderful color. You know, the, the best... Rotos from here actually start to approach the Nichuaning mm -hmm. uh, level of quality, which I don't think any other locality really does. Nope. So uh, that's what we got as far as the uh, Roto mm -hmm. highlight reel. Right. And uh, hold on to your seats because we got some Rotos. Yep. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Yep. <laughs> we got to try to sell you something first. Yep. <laughs> um, speaking of the kind of the squished rhombohedrons, this is an example from Mother Wutong mine. Yeah, and this, this is a big crystal. I'm looking at it on the turntable here. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a really sizable crystal. You can see that that stand there kind of for size reference. Right. This is uh, 8 by 8 by 3.3 .3 centimeters, right. so big roto crystal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's that kind of interesting habit that, that Rich was talking about there. Yeah, and it's got some beautiful little association of chalcopyrite yeah. sprinkled around it. This is something interesting I've seen with a number of the Wutong Rotos that they have the sulfide association. Right. And uh, I think it's a nice contrast. You know, this is basically, it looks like a, a almost a floater crystal. I agree. Complete yep. all around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Super nice piece. Yeah, big, yeah. big Roto. And I think you're going to be really surprised at the price on this one. You know, I don't give think. You, give you an yeah, idea of the scale there. Hand for scale hand. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think anywhere else you could get a high quality roto crystal like this that that's this big right for uh, for this kind of price for just fifteen hundred dollars yep. yeah great deal yep. if this was from the sunny side mine would be more oh yeah many thousands mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know you, you, even sweet home yeah so mm -hmm. this this is a great deal and uh, the Wutong is not producing anymore right mm -hmm. this uh, as far as I know is basically the Wutong is done yep. so a uh, chance to get a great Wutong roto if you don't have one already absolutely. And here's the one we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. That's Look at a the nice size one. of that wow. realm. Yeah, that's fantastic. And yeah. uh, you'll, I think you'll see it here in the photos. Mm -hmm. Really rich red color. You yeah. know, we, we were talking about the Wutong being the so called Chinese sweet home mine. Right. This one's got really intense cherry red color. Yep. Um, you know, this color just does not occur that many places in the world, this right. kind of cherry red color. Super, super piece. Yep. Nice luster. And mm -hmm. a really well-formed rhombohedra. And yep. I, from, from what I've seen, uh, these were kind of the minority of the Wutong Rotos. Correct, yeah. This, Very this small area in the upper levels had this kind of yeah. habit. So Most of them were more squishy like the first one we had. Yeah, on. and maybe a little more opaque to more pink. 
Right. You know, this this thing really glows. I mean, if you get a light on this in your cabinet, this, oh, this yeah. is going to light up your case. Mm -hmm. And an interesting etched surface as well. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at that. This is mm -hmm. pretty cool. You have all these etching features on mm -hmm. the faces. But, you know, still a pretty good luster, actually. I'm, I'm looking at it here oh, going yeah. around. And Absolutely. It's got a nice, nice luster. Yeah. And it, hmm, go ahead. I was just going to say, again, with this one, I think you'd be going to be surprised at the uh, price-quality relationship to get right. a big gem red roto like this, you yep. know, if this was from Sweet Home or uh, anywhere else, really, in the world. I think, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you'd, you'd pay a pretty penny for it. This this is a nice one. Absolutely. Let's, let's just cut to the chase and get right to it. <laughs> Tried to keep it under five, forty nine ninety nine. Just a, just a yep. hair under five grand. Yep. And, uh, you know, if you're a Roto collector, if you're a China collector, uh, I would give this one some, some real consideration mm -hmm. because uh, this is a special Wutong one. Absolutely. I'll even I'll even go out on a winger right now and and offer this for forty five hundred dollars. You heard it here first, folks. Forty five hundred dollars. Minerals at collectorsedge dot com. Yep. Mm. yep. Look at the size of that. That's a fantastic crystal. Maybe even better really against my nice. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <Here is laughs> yeah, little, yeah, I got the red here. Not a much. A little contrast. better contrast. Yeah, yeah, we'll wear some roto red for <laughs> yep. today. Yeah. No, this this is a great yep. crystal, folks. For that price, I really Super piece. don't think you can go wrong. Nope. And speaking of the sunny side mine, specimen number three is from there. All right. Let me see if I can get there. There we go. Yeah, this this is a nice one too. So this this is a real Colorado classic. Absolutely. I didn't I didn't talk about the Sunnyside mine, but uh, you know after the Sweet Home mine, obviously the Sunnyside is probably the most second second most famous rotocrosite location in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's produced some really classic, very characteristic uh, pink ROMs on white quartz matrix. And uh, this is another thing that's that's tough to get these days. You know, to get a nice one uh, with undamaged crystals that are good sized. You can see Rich has a great close up photo there of that mm -hmm. main crystal mm -hmm. is uh, about 2.7 centimeters. Right. So good sized crystal. Absolutely. I really like this piece a lot. Yeah, I, I do too. This is one I'm amazed is still on the shelves, yep. honestly, mm -hmm. because you just don't see that many. And uh, I think after we tell you the price, it might be on your shelf. Might be. <laughs> it, uh, it came to us uh, from a small private collection fella needed to uh, get a new transmission for his truck yep. <laughs> so uh it happens yep <laughs> so uh yeah <laughs> that uh his misfortune is your good fortune yep so so yep worked out for him and worked out for us because yep. this this is a great great classic yep. and uh this is a good size miniature too this piece overall is uh 3.5 by 6 by 4.2 centimeters mm -hmm. so great great miniature size specimen yep let me see if i can get it on the turntable as it comes around it wants to wash out a little bit from that angle yeah the, the white on pink is a little tough <laughs> it's but tough I, for that I think camera. in that photo you can really see that the right. color contrast you know this baby pink on it's the white trying. quartz is really classic for sunny side yep yeah you can see all those cool features on the mm -hmm. big roto as well yep those growth features all right let's cut to the chase here let's see Drum roll there we go just six hundred dollars hundred dollars yep. that is a deal yep mm -hmm. Yeah, you just don't see these around in this quality much anymore. Yep. So I think you're going to like this piece. one. Yep, and great great condition, too. You know, a lot of these have little edge issues, and this right. one is really in wonderful condition. Yep. If I didn't already have one in my collection, I, I'd buy yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, at that price, Seriously. it's tempting. Yeah, buy before I do, folks. Mm -hmm. we're, we're collectors, too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not competing with no, you. No, we no, promise. no, 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 we're mm -hmm. not, we're not. Mm -hmm. No conflict of interest. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you get first bite. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> but seriously, give it give us a shout out. You're gonna right. like this one. That's right. Specimen number four. We were talking about the Kalahari. This is an interesting habit from there. Yeah, this is an interesting habit. This this is quite different. So, you know, the, the Kalahari is most famous for the, the big scalenohedrons, but there's all different habits and uh, this is a really, really showy piece. Uh, I like this one a lot. It's mm -hmm. uh, I think these are actually small uh, scalenohedrons, but uh, okay. they're, they're maybe some of them are doubly terminated. It, it's a little bit hard to tell, but basically mm -hmm. the effect you're getting is a kind of a butchroidal look right. that has crystals all over it. Okay. So you're getting wonderful luster. You can see in that photo, great luster mm -hmm. and a really nice color as well. This this right. is more red than pink for sure. All right. Another piece I like a lot. It's got a lot of character with a hummocky, yep. you know, bumpy surface a lot of relief to it yeah very very showy piece mm -hmm. and uh you know this is another thing that you just you don't see these in this quality from kalahari much anymore they are still mining some of the kalahari deposits mm -hmm. 
and uh, I'm not sure precisely which which mine this one is from. I think it's probably from one of the Nichuaning mines. Yeah, it just says Kalahari. Kalahari, yeah. yeah. So there's you know there's many mines in the district uh, that uh, you don't see this this quality roto coming out much anymore. Right. And uh, wonderful wonderful luster on this one. I think Rich captured that in the photos there. And. For just nine hundred and seventy-five dollars, it could yep. be yours. Kept this one under a grand. This yep. is a great, great miniature. It's a good size, six point five by six by two centimeters. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you're a miniature collector, if you're a roto collector, definitely consider this one. Absolutely. Let's see here. Get back to us, and then move on to the move next one. Move on specimen. to specimen number this five. This piece is um, extraordinary. Yeah. I really like it. This is a fantastic piece. You know, you want to talk crystal quality mm -hmm. and perfection. This this is pretty tough to beat. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talked about the, the Uchu Chakwa mine, which is where this one is from, and uh, how the crystals are, are typically on the black matrix, and they're a little smaller, they're a little darker. This one's got everything going for it. It's on light matrix. It's totally gem. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you can see that in that photo there. Yep. But look at that on the turntable. You can see this crystal is like facet quality. Right. Really nice. Super. Actually looks good. It does. Yeah, I know that turntable <laughs> yeah. is really picking up that, that gemminess. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's in a little vug there. This is right. very typical for the Uchu Chakwa mine. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's tough to get these out in this kind of pristine condition. Too. Right, right. You know, we talked about how soft rotocrosite is. It's only a three and a half. Right. Uh, so to get an undamaged gem roto like this is, mm -hmm. is really rare. Yep. And uh, this crystal is, is good size too. It's 2.5 centimeters. Tall, yep. yep. Yeah, one, one inch crystal. Super little piece, really glows. You know, mm. you put it under a light in your case and it just pops. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know the, the eye is always drawn to rotocrosite, I think. And any, any, any display, any cabinet, it's just one of those minerals your eye goes to. Right. Try to give a little close up there. Yeah, yeah nice close up shot. Yeah. You, you can see that transparency there. I had a little competition from another photographer that was in the, uh, in the oh. building yesterday, so <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get into the photo lab yesterday yeah. to take a picture. I had to do this with my phone. Uh oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's pretty good for a cell phone. Yeah, photo. not too bad. <laughs> yeah. But as you folks know, uh, yeah. we have a. Uh, a uh, preview policy, so to speak. Right. We will send things on approval, and yep. I think when you get this one in the mail, you're going to be very pleased with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And uh, for for fifty two fifty, this this is a wonderful, wonderful quality piece. Really yep. nice. Is this a this a uh, Wagner? Gerhard Wagner piece. piece okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So so Gerhard Wagner, as most of you know, specialized in tourmaline, but mm -hmm. uh, he had a great worldwide collection as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And this is, I think, one of the finer pieces from his his worldwide collection that we have. Yep. Mm -hmm. So don't let this opportunity pass. That's right. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, as usual, let me we're, see if I can... We're, we're ending on Roto. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. If you wonder why I'm looking around like this, is we have this big microphone right here. Yeah. And, and, then, and to look at the preview slots on the uh, on the software, I sometimes have to look but around we want to make sure you can hear us. So right. That's uh -huh. important. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> should figure out a better place to put the yeah, microphone. but that's okay. It is what it is. Yeah. Anyway, yep. moving on. Specimen number six is from, of course, the Sweet Home. From mine. the Sweet Home, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we we had to include a, a Sweet Home piece. And uh, this is a real cute little miniature. Mm -hmm. um, this is from the 0417 Pocket, which uh, I guess is probably one of the last pockets found at yeah. the Sweet Home. Third to the last, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this shows some of the, the really nice stuff that we were finding up, up until the end there. Yep. This, this guy Let's is 3.3 by 5 by 3.3 centimeters, so great miniature. And uh, those rotos are up, are up to about 1.3 centimeters mm -hmm. on edge. And it really is pretty much a 360 piece. Um, yeah. You know, you can get around the back side here. It's a little quartz coated, the rotos on the back side, but uh, it's still quite attractive. Yeah, really, really showy miniature. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of rotos, obviously, uh, either they're in the matrix or buried a little bit in the quartz crystals and sulfides. The, these are very aerial on the on the quartz. Right. And uh, I think that big quartz crystal there kind of sets it off. I agree. That, that's a classic Sweet Home combination. Yep. To get that. Love this piece. Just a couple of close-ups of uh, the ROMs. So there's yep, that guy. Nice, nice sharp ROMs. Yep. See, this one shows the quartz pretty well. Yeah, well. yeah, that's just such a classic Sweet Home combo. You know, mm -hmm. you show that to any collector in the world, and they instantly will say Sweet Home. Right. So uh, if you're a Roto collector, worldwide collector, like miniatures, and mm -hmm. you don't have a good Sweet Home Roto, uh, I think this one, you can't go wrong for the price. Today's your day at $975. Yep, yep. keeping it under a grand again for this this really fine, showy uh, Sweet Home Roto Crow site. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we would love to send any or all of these out to you on approval. Mm -hmm. So uh, wow. give give Richard a shout, mm -hmm. give me a shout, and uh, we can make that happen. And I Absolutely. think you'll be happy with them. 
quite the quite the suite of roto if you took them all it would be a, yeah. a nice roto wow. collection mm. yeah if, if you want to just dive into the roto world and get a, a roto starter collection I, th I think you could do a lot worse than these right so there's a there's a couple of them that are on consignment to us but otherwise we would do the uh, extra 10 percent off yep so, give, give you a good package deal except on yeah. the big rom from china that i already did that for you yeah so. that one's already <laughs> that one's already discounted so. at 4500 yeah so yeah as us, far as we can go know. yep yeah so uh well thanks yeah. everybody hope you enjoyed that thank you phil that's yeah, great absolutely everybody uh definitely the best comments we get about the show is when you do presentations well so thank it's you great <laughs> you're right up there with dr I'm, hagedorn i'm still convinced yep. there's only five, about five people but to you five people mm. thank you yeah. I, I appreciate it <laughs> maybe we're growing the audience well, i am going to post this on social media but good I'm put it on the instagram so. great great you're working your way <laughs> yeah. up the rock star stars, so. <laughs> you got to start somewhere man yeah mm. the ultimate rock nerd yep <laughs> oh anyway well thank Thanks, everybody, and yep. we'll catch you next week yep. with uh, one final plug on uh, our Tucson preview for uh, all yeah. of our venues at the Tucson show. Steve will be back. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can rope in Mr. Sutton or something. Ooh. And uh... oh, He's actually already gone. <laughs> oh, he's already true. on his way to that's Tucson. That's true. He's already, he's, already, he's already heading down there. Right. That's Bet. probably who that phone call was from, yep. actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, no, he's already on his way to Tucson to get everything organized for our wholesale venues, and um, it's happening. It's, it's happening. It's yeah. uh, like a week and a half away. So. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're busy. Mm -hmm. Busy bees around here getting right. ready. Yep. So I uh, hope to see you down there and yep. uh, mm -hmm. tune in next Wednesday and we'll have a final update. Absolutely. Thanks, Phil. Yep. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. And we'll catch you next week on Minerals Live.